Greetings, welcome back to Game Dev Academy. I am Shane and in this quick video I just wanted to jump on the bandwagon to make sure everybody knew that Maya 2023 has now been released. So I've just got it installed. This is the new splash screen and you can see we've got a what's new section which makes my job of telling you what's newer heck of a lot easier, doesn't it? So we'll just go through some of these things and then we'll take a look at them. So if we start up with some of the stuff that I don't use, so the USD plugin is not something I really use and I haven't used a lot of uh, Bifrost, but we've got updates to those. The blue pencil tool looks really cool, which allows you to do things like, uh, it's good for blocking in animation, you can also annotate your scenes. One thing that I do think looks really cool is the uh, improved Boolean operations, and we will take a look at that in this video. The mesh wireframe opacity, we can look at that as well. I don't know how much use I would get out of it, but it can make your scenes a little easier on the eyes. They've continued to further improve the animation performance with things like further improving the cache playback, stuff like that. The retopology tools have got better as well, which I think are really important. If you're going to be using Booleans, I think retopology, especially for inexperienced users, retopology after you've used Booleans is a really good idea. They've continued to improve on the deformers. They've improved modeling performance. We've got some sweet mesh operations, not something that I really use, but they're there for those of you that do. Um, VR for Myri is something that I would like to play with that I haven't had time or chance yet and there are even uh, more features that I'm not going to go into right now let's just get um, stuck in oh and in fact it might seem like a small thing but one of the things that I like about this update the most is this new little uh, icon they've got going on I prefer this to the previous one by quite a lot I think that looks much better uh, and they've also added things like this so you've got some tabs down the side so getting started learning I think is quite a useful tab uh, and you can see they've got their own um, videos in there I personally would recommend putting in some Game Dev Academy ones because they are pretty good. But, you know, they won't be told. Anyways, let's uh, create a new scene. Here we go. You can see that the layout is very familiar. They haven't changed much. Uh, and I suppose as the year goes on, as I learn about these new changes, I will probably share them with you as we go along. But for now, I want to share with you, we'll take a look at the new Booleans, the wireframe opacity and the retopology as well. So let's start with just creating something kind of cool. So let's make a cube. Let's scale that bad boy up a little bit. Um, should we turn it into a die? Should we do that? Let's hit it with a bevel. Let's have some fun with it. If we're doing it anyway, we might as well. We'll go um, five segments there. We'll go 0 0.2 there. Mm, 0 0.15. And then what we want to do is put in some of these numbers if you get a die and i'm going to do that with a sphere like so and we're just going to do that with it now if we place this into the mesh about there that's going to be one on the die for us and back in the old day you'd have to select um the mesh that you want to keep shift select the mesh that you want to get rid of and use booleans but if we now go to mesh Booleans, you can see there are a lot more options. Oh, hang on, I've lost it. Mesh booleans, there are a lot more options than there used to be. And now it doesn't matter which order you select them in because you can do A minus B or B minus A, and that'll be to do with the order that you selected them in. So if we do that, we'll do A minus B, and straight away we've got our Boolean. So now we've got um, our shape cut in, but what's different now is that that original mesh hasn't gone. And what I really like about this is that it's still live. So if I decide that the position's not right and I want to move it over here, well, I can, and it's still being cut in. So if I just deselect that, you can see that that's now being cut in. And we'll undo that because I did want it in the center. And we can do some other cool things as well. So it's this P sphere that's being cut out. So we can change it and go the other way around. And actually we can have the cube being cut out of the sphere. Not that I want to do that, but it's an option. And we'll go back to where we were. And there are some other operations as well, such as hole punch, which cuts it in but leaves the mesh open. Cut out does the opposite of that. Slice just kind of creates a hole in the mesh that you can mess with. Not that I want to do that. Uh, intersection behaves pretty much as it always did and just kind of keeps um, the mesh that would have been left behind if we just did the difference. And Union obviously puts them together. Uh, but this can be really powerful because it means that we've always got access to this and we can make some really cool changes to it if we want to like that so that's really cool 
So if we do that, there are some things as well. So we can also change the visibility. So let's say we just want to hide that mesh. We can totally do that uh, and just see the result that we're getting from it. And now that I've hidden that mesh, I'll just bring it back, back onto wireframe. It tells me that I wanted that to be a little bit smaller. Cool. Right, so now uh, I'm just going to cut the video whilst I put the rest of these booleans in, and then we'll have a look at the retopology tool. Okay, so I have now completed my die. Uh, you can see I've used booleans in the same method to cut out all the faces. I could hide them and it would look as it will eventually. And what we'll do is we'll just make a copy of this, duplicate it over, and then we can kind of see how it looks. And those of you that are in the know will know that the topology of this is not acceptable really, because we've got n-gons everywhere. Um, the topology is really, it's really inconsistent and it's not the way we want to go. So we'll look at the retopology tool to deal with that. So first what I'm just going to do on this shape is delete the history on it. And then we'll go to mesh, retopologize, and there are some settings for it. So if we just look at what the triangle count is that is required for this at the moment. So let's go to display, heads up display, and poly count. That's currently taking 9,000 triangles. We're going to need about the same because um, we need to get the topology. We might even need more to be fair. So what we'll do is we'll put in 5,000 here. It's 5,000 because this is quads, not triangles. And we'll try and preserve the hard edges because there are some hard edges that we need. And then what we'll do is just click on apply. And you can see there, it's just finished up. I think the result is actually quite good. Um, because it sort of creates brand new geometry for this, there's no material applied. So I just need to delete my history before I apply material to it. So let's just go to Lambert. And then we can see if I take this one here and we'll duplicate this one so we can see them side by side. Visually, there's very little difference between them. But this one has even topology. This one needs to go in the bin. But this is still an important building stage on getting to this. And then there are things that you can do with this one to reduce the um, polygon count down. Not that I'm going to cover that in this particular video, though. Once you've got a denser mesh like this, you might choose to see your wireframe unshaded. So if we just turn that on, wireframe unshaded, that might be a little bit busy for you. And now in Maya, we can reduce the impact of that a little bit. So if we go to the shape node and go to object display and we can find the drawing override section and enable overrides like so, we need to change the color from index to RGB. But what that means we can do now is we can actually lower the opacity. So if we drop that down to let's say 0.2. And so now we can still see our wireframe, but it's almost just like a hint, just a little hint of a wireframe. Maybe there was a wireframe there once in the past, but it's faded over time. But I find that easier on the eyes. So that's another feature. I'm not going to go over any more in this video then. It was just to show you some of the new tools and features that are available. And to let you know that Maya 2023 is now out and available to download should you wish to do that. If there are any other features that you want me to cover, then let me know in the comments below. And I might even knock out a video for it. Otherwise, all that is left for me to do is to thank you for watching. I've been Shane for Game Dev Academy, and I'll see you in the next class.